Commentary from Florence Govelshin's 1941 book, The Secret Door to Success. Let us explore Chapter 1, The Secret Door to Success. Florence says, I've given the following statement to neutralize envy and resentment. What God has done for others, he now does for me and more. And Florence gives the example of a woman whose friend received a gift. And this woman was so filled with envy, so she made this statement. What God has done for others, he now does for me and more. And someone gifted an exact duplicate of the gift plus another gift. So we must learn to do the same. Because when we stay in the state of envy, it closes us off from the things that we do want. So the best way is to turn the energy of envy, the state of envy, around. In Florence's case, she uses well-crafted words, and if need be, repeating it the next day and so forth. Florence says, It is a word of realization which brings about a change in your affairs. For words and thoughts are a form of radioactivity. So you do not merely think, that your thoughts and words are in vain, especially when tied with feeling, intense feeling, feelings that are perpetuated. All these, in a way, are like little radio waves, radio antennas, drawing to us the different experiences in life that reflect the thoughts and words. Florence goes on to say, Talking too much about your affairs, scattering your forces, brings you up against a high wall. Florence talked about a man who was a complete failure. He lived with his mother and aunt. And when he would come home from work, he would talk about all his angers and fears and failures. Florence told him, You scatter your forces by talking about your affairs. Don't discuss your business with your family. Silence is golden. Now, of course, as many people, his mother and aunt were a bit disappointed because they enjoyed all these tales of woes and fears. And not long after... This man ended up with an even higher paying job, by several hundred percent. Florence says, success is not a secret, it is a system. So when you look over your day to day, or your past days, weeks, months, how often do you talk about your fears and anxieties? So from this moment on, learn to observe more. Are you having quality conversations? Because if you're not, then it's better to just be silent. Because when you talk about the very things that you don't want in your life, you perpetuate them. It is better to think about what you want instead, or otherwise stay silent. Even in the silence, there's a chance for all the good that you are thinking to blossom from it. But at least don't slow down what you want, or totally cancel it out, by investing too much in a conversation so what you don't want to perpetuate. Because as Florence says, you attract the things you give a great deal of thought to, So if you give a great deal of thought to lack, you attract lack. If you give a great deal of thought to injustice, you attract more injustice. What are the things that you are giving thought to? Because that will show you what you're going to be experiencing more of. But now that you're hearing this, you can change that. And start to take note when you catch yourself thinking or saying something unlovely or someone else. Turn it around. What would you like to focus on instead, thus bring into your life? And now let's explore Chapter 2, Bricks Without Straw. Florence gives a metaphysical interpretation of the fifth chapter of Exodus. She wrote, The children of Israel were in bondage to Pharaoh, the cruel taskmaster ruler of Egypt. They were kept in slavery, making bricks, and were hated and despised. Moses had orders from the Lord to deliver his people from bondage. Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh not only refused to let them go, but told them he would make their tasks even more difficult. They must make bricks without straw being provided for them, and when they weren't able to, they were beaten. To make bricks without straw is symbolic of accomplishing the seeming impossible. How often in our lives are we confronted with things we feel are impossible? How many of the things that we want that we don't already have do we feel may be impossible to have? And the oppression in this example can be symbolic of all destructive thinking, pride, fear, resentment, ill will, and so forth. So what would be the solution in this oppressive situation, or in any oppressive situation, maybe one you're going through now, or someone you know is going through? 
Florence teaches to drown it all out with vital affirmation and choosing the words wisely so they can slip right past the conscious mind and plant firmly and impregnate in the subconscious mind. What would it feel like to be free? What would it feel like to be free of all oppression? And what would it feel like to have instead, say, security, health, happiness, and abundance? To be free, unlimited. So Florence gives this affirmation. The unexpected happens. My seemingly impossible good now comes to pass. The unexpected happens. And Florence talked about, as we go through life, and we may feel oppressed by different things, sometimes there is one kingpin, oppressor, the greatest thing that is oppressing one. Sometimes in the logging business, a single log can cause a huge jam, and in removing that one log, all the other logs are able to flow freely. So find the kingpin, oppressor in your life that all your logs to success, happiness, and abundance can go rushing down your river. And for many, that kingpin is self-love, self-worth. People often just don't feel good enough deserving. But how does it feel to know you are good enough? You are worthy. You are loved. And as you start to feel that, and vibrate with that, and make that your home, all the other oppressions become small and dissolve into that and are healed. And now let us explore chapter 3, and five of them were wise. Now Florence talks here about armchair faith, or rocking chair faith, and she says this will never move mountains. What is it? It is basically when you have positive thinking at only certain times of the day. Maybe you say when you wake up you'll meditate for half an hour and say some affirmations, but the rest of the day your thoughts are uncontrolled, all kinds of fears and anxieties and angers and envies. You want to make a habit of living in the fourth dimension, of living in the world of the wondrous, of making your imaginative world more real, but naturally and joyfully. Because otherwise, when you live in the world that you call reality, you'll be constantly judging after appearances and having all kinds of reactions and thoughts and worries. So we must always keep the imaginative with us, our own heaven. It will take practice and reminders such as this, but you wouldn't be hearing this if you weren't called. Florence tells you to train your inner eyes to see through failure into success, to see through sickness into health, to see through limitation into plenty. So you must train your inner eye, your imagination, whatever the limitation is, learn to see through it. Learn to see what is noble and lovely and perfect. And success is being able to plant these ideas, to stay with it. And as you do this in your successes build, it will become your rock. Otherwise, when you rely on the dream of life, it is like relying on a castle made of sand that the sea can wash away. All in the dream of life can return back to its native nothingness. But forever you have your awareness and the gift of imagining. Put your faith there. Florence also notes that whatever you prepare for, that's what you often get. Florence says that even if you affirm and imagine for what you do want, and yet you prepare for its failure, it comes from an attitude of lack, and that's what you will manifest more of. So you must go all out and commit, and take the leap of faith to walk on water, as many times as it takes, 70 times 7, Because if these are the greatest truths that these mystics have been teaching us since ancient times, then it is the only way we will uncover them for ourselves through our own personal experience. But we must apply it and persist long enough to be able to prove itself as our knowledge and skill grows in the use of it and in the successes. Florence also noted in crafting a perfect affirmation that it create a vivid picture in the mind and she talks about one of her famous affirmations, the magic purse. She had heard about the magic purse in a story in Arabian Nights. As money went out, immediately money appeared in it again. So she made the statement, My supply comes from God. I have the magic purse of the Spirit. It can never be depleted. As money goes out, immediately money comes in. It is always crammed, jammed with abundance, under grace and perfect ways. 
So when you craft your words, affirmation, script, whatever you want to call it, look to bring the words to life, to paint a vivid picture. This is what Florence found in her experience to best impress the subconscious mind for success. So if you take something that you want now, maybe it's wealth, health, love, success, and when you craft your own affirmation around it, have fun and get a little creative and bring the affirmation to life. And now let us explore chapter four. What do you expect? Florence writes, how can you change your expectancies when you have formed the habit of expecting loss, lack, or failure? Begin to act as if you expected success, happiness, and abundance. Prepare for your good. Do something to show you expect it to come. Act of faith alone will impress the subconscious. So, for example, Florence is saying if you're looking for a house, then prepare for it immediately. Maybe you'll collect some ornaments or some tablecloths for this house. And if you don't have the money to do so, you can at least window shop. The point is you're trying to get into vibration with the success of what you want. So make friends with the things you desire or require. As Florence says, you combine with what you notice. And sooner or later these things will be drawn into your life. Just do your best not to undo it with doubts and fears. Or saying, poor me, this is too good to be true. Because the reason you're listening to this is not because you're looking for a rational way. If a rational way worked you wouldn't be listening to this. But something within you wants to tap into the miraculous, that which is unlimited, that which mystics have been pointing to since the ancient of times. So whatever blessings you feel may be too big or far, leave it to the God, the imagination within you, from where these desires were born, unclouded by the thoughts that have kept them hostage. Simply play in imagination, that they're already here, you already have them. And what would you say then, if it was already so? That's your affirmation. And if you want to bring it to life and color it, even the more better. And now let us explore chapter 5, The Long Arm of God. In this chapter, Florence talks about how our negative emotions often are the cause for our physical maladies. Negative emotions are like poison, and repeated cause illness. The solution is to learn to become non-resistant, and non-resistance is an art. Florence says, when acquired, the world is yours. So many people are trying to force situations. Your lasting goodwill will never come through forcing personal will. For Florence, as well as many mystics teach, big successes often happen when we least expect them, when we let them go long enough for the great law of attraction to operate. Florence also teaches that when you want something too much, you demagnetize it, because you end up worrying and fearing and agonizing. She talks about the occult law of indifference. None of these things move me. Your ships come in over a don't-care sea. It's not to say that people can't manifest when they're intense, because people do. Florence also told the story of one of the fastest runners, and he said his secret was simply to relax while he was running. So find what helps relax you. Maybe it's listening to music or going for a walk, using carefully crafted words, affirmations, to help drown out fears and worries and thoughts. Or in those poignant times, such as mystics like Neville taught, going into sleep, or for some people when they wake, or after lunch, or a combination, to play vividly in imagination and to feel what you want is already yours. Seduce the subconscious with the rational mind. Florence also teaches the importance of not holding on to things, especially because you're afraid and coming from lack. She would teach people that when they would spend money, you can bless it. So every dollar, or whatever your currency is, whenever you spend it, you can bless it and say it will return a thousandfold. And Florence's students also did this and encountered success. Thousands of dollars would come back to them in unexpected ways. And you can do it too as well. The next time you go out to buy something, bless the money that you set out, that it come back a thousandfold. And for the things you have to purchase, or for whatever your intuition guides you to spend, feel the joy of letting it circulate and come back to you a thousandfold or more. 
Now some have asked Florence, why do some demonstrate so much easier quickly than others? And Florence talked about, it depends on what kind of soil the seed falls upon, fertile or infertile. And that seed is finding the statement, affirmation words that click, that help you catch the feeling of your wish fulfilled. That statement will bear fruit. So find what it is you want, and then find the words that would be so if you had what you wanted, the words that feel like magic. And those are the words that will bring you success, persist as need be. Let us explore chapter 6, The Fork in the Road. Florence says, every day there is a necessity of choice, a fork in the road. Now it is necessary for you to make a decision. You face a fork in the road. Ask for a definite, unmistakable lead, and you will receive it. That fork in the road is symbolic of indecision, sometimes when our limited rational mind is battling the unlimited imaginative mind. When you just don't know, Florence says to let God juggle every situation. Juggling is using the intellect. Let go by asking the divine within to give you a sure sign. And don't listen to the average person, because they will always be filled with reasons why something can't be done. But you're not the average person, so instead saying something can't be done, you say, why not? And feel after an imagination, but if you come to a fork in the road, there's no shame in letting it go to the divine and asking for a clear sign. Florence notes, all big ideas meet with opposition. Do not let other people rock your boat. So as we reach the fork in the road today, let us fearlessly follow the voice of intuition. I am divinely led. I follow the right fork in the road. God makes a way where there is no way. If you are ever feeling lost, repeat these words. I am divinely led. I follow the right fork in the road. God makes a way where there is no way. Let us explore Chapter 7, Crossing Your Red Sea. Whatever problems you may be facing, even if you've lost your drive to whatever you feel is oppressing you, say to yourself now, go forward, go forward. To push your oppression back, find the vital statement of truth, affirmation, for example, Florence says, if it's financial, it may be something like, My supply comes from God, and big, happy financial surprises now come to me under grace in perfect ways. And you can take this same formula and use it for whatever it is you want. My supply comes from God, and whatever it is that you want now comes to you under grace in perfect ways. And now let us explore Chapter 8. The Watchman at the Gate Florence here talks about the importance of controlling thoughts, but sometimes that feels impossible when we've gone so many years where our thoughts freely flow, and often for the things we don't want. Fears, angers, envies, jealousies. Sometimes it feels so much like a stampeding cattle or sheep, but she talks about the beauty of a single sheepdog that can gently guide all the frightened sheep and guide them to their sheep pen. And this is what Florence is teaching that affirmations are, carefully crafted words, when repeated continuously. Now Florence notes we might not always be able to control our thoughts, but we can control words and repeat them, carefully crafted affirmations. And she found success with helping to impress the subconscious mind doing such. So let the thoughts that have become a habit of roaming alone and gently guide them back into their place by holding steadfast to the words of power. For Florence says, your success and happiness in life depend upon the watchmen at the gate of your thoughts, sooner or later crystallized on the external. She says, so learn to be indifferent by not judging after appearances what you see in reality. Instead, hold steady to the constructive thought, affirmation, because it will eventually win out. Every plant my Father in heaven has not planted shall be rooted up. So no longer do we nourish negative thoughts by giving them attention, thus letting them grow and perpetuate. Now, knowing these laws, we will learn to be indifferent and not judge after the appearances, reality, 
for it is just crystallized imagination. Refuse to be interested. And now let us explore chapter 9, The Way of Abundance. Here Florence talks about The average person has been stuck in poverty consciousness so long that it feels too hard and far to build up a rich consciousness. And she says many people have become mentally lazy to try to bring themselves out of it. To change, we must have a great desire. That will push us to feel we are what we want to be. If you want to be rich, you must feel you're rich. You must see yourself as being rich. And you must continually prepare that you are rich. Florence says we must learn to be like little children who have fun and playing make-believe. If the hunger, the fever is not upon you yet, then at least this seed is planted. But when that desire grows into a fever, use these tools to bring your heaven on earth. Feel for what it is you want to be. And now let us explore chapter 10, I Shall Never Want. Florence says the reason it is necessary to make an affirmation is because repetition impresses the subconscious. You cannot control your thoughts at first, but you can control your words. And now let us explore chapter 12, Catch Up With Your Good. Florence says, No matter what you are doing, ask for guidance. It saves time and energy and often a lifetime of misery. And what is the way to ask for guidance? Simply ask. Infinite intelligence, give me a definite lead. Let me know just what to do. And any time you feel stuck or unsure, just simply ask these words from your heart. And in some way, the infinite intelligence within you will guide you. Maybe through coincidences, something you come across, something a friend says, or even a stranger. But something will click and guide you. And now let us explore chapter 13, Rivers in the Desert. Florence says, Make your contact with infinite intelligence, the God within, and all appearances of evil evaporates, for it comes from man's vain imaginings. In my question and answer class, I would be asked, How do you make a conscious contact with this invincible power? In reply, By your word. By your word you are justified. Whatever it is that ails you, find the words that would give you relief. It could be as simple like mystics Neville Goddard teach, hearing a congratulations that whatever you want is already yours. Or you could make it more elaborate and visually stimulating, such as Florence often does. Florence goes on to say, People are enslaved by ideas of lack, lack of love, lack of money, lack of companionship, lack of health and so on. They are enslaved by the ideas of interference and incompletion. And people also get lost in a tree of good and evil, judging after what is right or wrong. Leave all judgments aside. Get clear on what it is you want. And what is the feeling if you had what you want? And what are the words that would be born from that feeling? Marry those words. And by marry, I mean nurture. Repeat them. Give life to them. Through your breath, and let them be born in your reality, as lovely, noble, tangible experiences in your reality. And in closing with chapter 14, Florence talks about the inner meaning of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. She gives a metaphysical interpretation, and one of the ideas is that of a cruel stepmother. We often have some cruel figure in our life, or at some point. And Florence teaches that this cruel stepmother is a negative thought form you have built up in the subconscious. But the good news is something we don't want that we unintentionally created. We now become aware of. We can uncreate it and instead intentionally create what we do want. What will you now create in your world? Have fun learning to sculpt with your words and bringing them to life. Nurturing them with your attention and persistence. But above all, learn to be like children, enjoy the process, have fun, but knowing these great mystical truths behind them, and hand in hand with the true desires of your heart, your own heaven. May you now use the key to unlock the doors of overflowing success, forever and forever. And this ends commentary on Florence Scovel Shin's The Secret Door to Success.